This is my summary of social psychology research methods from the Sci 2 Free 4 course from Macquarie University. So, as stated before in a previous video, social psychology is the study of reactions to situational influences. It investigates thought, feeling, and behaviors in actual, imagined, or implied presence of others and social psychology and social psychology is used when heuristics and intuition falls short an example of this is milgram's experiment in which 65 percent of people went up to triple x or lethal electric shock which found that humans would conform to the situation as opposed to abiding by their own moral conscience festinger and carl smith in 1959 discovered that those who got $1 as opposed to those who got $20 stated that they enjoyed a very boring task. Milgram's as well as Festinger's and Carl Smith's studies shows that our own intuitions about ourselves are not as they appear to be. In order to conduct research in social psychology to discover certain phenomenon that doesn't always abide by our intuition, we rely on theory, which is the general principles that account for empirical findings. An example of a theory includes terror management, which is the fear of death that increases our anxiousness and arousal and causes people to bolster their specific worldview in the face of attempting to reduce anxiousness or arousal. There are ways to test and apply the theory, such as, for example, Zadro et al. in 2004 relied on the use of a cyber ball toss in order to see the impact that it would have in how people felt in real life. We use social psychology experiments to demonstrate phenomena such as Williams and Barra 2008 who discovered physical warmth at a correlation between interpersonal warmth. So feeling warm inside and feeling warm socially with other people are seen as linked. Social psychologists, as well as many other different types of psychologists and scientists in general, conduct these types of experiments which include between subjects experiments that look for consistency despite having different variables. Participants are randomly assigned to groups so that only the differences between two groups are manipulated and or treated. Within subjects experiments, however, don't rely or don't require that many participants since each participant does the task two times or more. And this allows for more control, but it makes the participants have more practice in the task. Factorial designs involve two or more categorical independent variables, and these can be between or within subjects' experiments. They measure the effects of the independent variable alone or together. Quasi-experimental designs samples are where samples aren't as representative and that there are no random allocation involved. As a result of this, it is very difficult to impute causality and it is usually hard to control or induce this experiment in a laboratory. Correlation designs are where there are no random allocation to treatment or control groups. As a result, it is very difficult to impute causality. And at most, you could just say that there is a link, a correlation. Things to consider in social psychology experiments include confounding variables, whereby there are two or more independent variables that co-vary, making it impossible to find the cause. We also have to consider external validity or mundane realism, which is defined as the experiments similarity between real world circumstances. How you can use laboratory research, let's say, to generalize to the real world situation. You also have to consider internal validity or experimental realism, which includes the psychological impact of manipulation in an experiment. We also have demand characteristics, where the experiment's features seem to demand certain responses. There are also subject effects, which are non-spontaneous effects that owe to the demand characteristic. Or, let's say for example, a participant wishing to please the experimenter. Researchers have come up with ingenious ways to get around this problem. 
through the double blind procedure that reduces experimenter effects since the experimenters themselves are unaware of the experimental conditions or the context behind it and are merely pawns used by other experimenters. Qualitative research or discourse relies on a communicative event in the situational socio-historical context. There is also discourse analysis which is a set of methods used to analyze text to understand meaning and significance behind a certain concept or value. And then finally there's meta theory which is the interrelated concepts principles that concern the theory. In summary we looked at what is social psychology, why we need social psychology in the face of when our intuitions fall short which was demonstrated in Milgram's experiment and Festinger's and Carl Smith's experiment as well. We looked at social psychology theory, terror management, testing techniques, how it is used to demonstrate a certain phenomenon, the different types of experimental designs used in social psychology such as between subjects experiments, within subjects experiments, factorial designs, quasi-experimental designs, correlation designs, we also looked at other features of the experiment, like whether it has a confounding variable, its external validity and internal validity, its demand characteristics, subject effects, double-blind procedures. Uh, we also looked at qualitative research, discourse analysis, and finally, meta-theory. Thanks for watching.